All right, in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the opportunity to, to, to speak about you. And uh, this is a time where we set apart to be thankful, and we know we should be thankful every day, but we get so busy that many times we forget to be thankful. Make our hearts truly full of gratitude to you. We just uh, ask as we're gathered here that you would take this opportunity as we look at your word, that you would make these words real to us, that we would apply these things to our lives and to our hearts. Just use me at this time to be a vessel. Forgive me my sins and enable me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name for his sake, that you might receive the praise. Amen. Amen. <laughs> This verse here, or this passage, teaches us that we should mix prayer with thanksgiving, and um, I'm going to teach you a lesson in that this, uh, this afternoon. I was going to say this morning, but this afternoon, I'm going to teach you a lesson, a lesson in that because it's been a long time since I've delivered a message that is to be so concise. So I want you to be praying that I'm able to do that, and uh, I would like to hold you to 10 or 15 minutes today. Pray, be praying that I, that I do that, and then be thankful afterwards if I accomplish that feat. <laughs> now, <laughs> I guess somebody will just come over and knock the, the podium over here in a minute if I, if I go over too long. But um, obviously we're gathered here today and uh, uh, to focus on being thankful. And uh, as I said in, in my prayer, we get so busy, we forget to be thankful. It's, it's good that we've taken, right in the middle of the day, we've taken time to gather together and, and to honor the one who has given us so much to be thankful for. You know, we live in a disgruntled society. Materialistically, we've been blessed in this country more than any other country. In this time, we've been blessed. If, if you Some of the things that, that we're able to do nowadays, uh, and here we're in a, in a place of healing, uh, things that commonly people died from. We see them come in and out of here and, and are, are healed by the grace of God. Um, but for some reason, the more we have, the less thankful we seem to be. Why is that? Because we forget to thank God for the little things. We forget to thank God. And, and you know, sometimes it takes something big, something earth shattering to make us truly appreciate God. But every single day we need to be thankful. Now, Paul wrote these words while he was in prison. He wrote these words and he's preaching and, and writing this, this letter to the, the, the saved people there in, in Philippi, the, the church that is in Philippi, telling them that they need to be thankful. Here is a man who, I think in, 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 if we were in that situation, we would be hard-pressed. As a matter of fact, he was thinking of others. He was thinking of, uh, of this church. Now, this church... Uh, Apparently they had some means, they had some wealth, because if we read through that letter, he talks about how they, they had uh, uh, sent gifts to him, that they were able to supply some of his material needs, and he was thankful for that. But we have great reasons to be thankful. And uh, as I said, I've got probably enough material that I've written down for a 45-minute sermon, so uh, let, let's get on with it. The reasons for thanksgiving. Number one, there is the trustworthiness of God. He said, be careful for nothing. We wouldn't say that today. We would phrase it, um, don't worry about anything. 
Don't worry about anything. How much do we worry about? How much do, as a matter of fact, how much do we worry about that never happens? You know, we, we, uh, uh, we create these scenarios in our heads and, and we get all upset and we forget to give it to God. We forget to turn it over to God. The scriptures say, cast all your cares upon him because he careth for you. So he said, don't worry about anything. Uh, be careful for nothing. Because why? Because God is trustworthy. We can trust God with any of our problems, with any of our situations. Paul was in a grave situation, but he understood that God was trustworthy. When we're not thankful, when we have ingratitude, we're not trusting God to handle the situation. We can trust God to be able to perform what is necessary in this same book, in the first chapter, verse 6, it says, Being confident in this very thing, that he which began a good work in you will perform it into the day of Jesus Christ. When we're unthankful, we, we not only doubt his motives, we not only uh, 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 doubt his care for us, but we doubt his ability to handle the situation. We're saying, uh, God, we don't think you can handle this, or, or you just don't care. Didn't the disciples in, the, in the, the ship, when they were in the midst of the storm, said, Lord, dost thou not care that we perish? Jesus knew where they were. He knew the situation, but he also knew the power of God. God's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save. We forget this in this day and age. All the political unrest, all, all the war, all the terrorism, all the other things, the, the hardship, we forget that God is still on the throne. Abraham said, surely the judge of all the earth will do right. We can trust God because he's able, because he cares, because he loves us. We can trust God because of the trials that we've overcome. John Newton in that great hymn, Amazing Grace, says, for many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. T'was grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead us home. We can trust God. God for today and for tomorrow because we know what he did for us yesterday. We can look back at the past. We can see how he's, he's sustained us, how he's kept us, how he's watched over us and how he's loved us through it all. We can trust God because of the triumph he causes Chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Once again, this is a man, it doesn't sound like a man in prison. This does not sound like a man who was facing a death sentence. This does not sound like a man who was down and outcast. He said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. There is triumph in thanksgiving. When we're grateful to God and we're thankful to God, we understand that he holds the victory in spite of what anyone would do, in spite of what anyone will think of us, in spite of anything, God holds the victory. And we can rejoice knowing that the victory is already ours. Let us look quickly at the repro uh, reprobation of the unthankful. They are unsatisfied. Verse 11 in that same chapter. It says, not that I speak of res in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. The ungrateful, the unthankful are never satisfied. It's never enough. It doesn't matter how much they uh, achieve. It doesn't matter how much they accomplish. It doesn't matter how much they accumulate. They are never satisfied. Oh, let us be thankful. Let us be content with what we have. And content that know and know that God can always give us more. We have a great God. 
We have a mighty God. We have a loving God. <coughs> Jesus told His disciples in Matthew chapter 7, if we being evil know how to give our children good gifts, how much more will our Father which is in heaven give unto us who ask Him? The unthankful or unsettled. They seek the things that are not profitable. They are unsteady. They lack the spiritual stamina to persevere. As I said, they are materialistically blessed, but they're spiritually destitute. The things of this earth will never satisfy. The things that we can hold in our hands will never be enough. But we, we know Christ. And we know the power that is in Christ. And we can call upon Him, Father God. Spurgeon said, uh, the main reason why we need to be thankful is because we can pray. Because we can come to Him. If you had the ear of a king, if you had the ear of the president or, or, or some great powerful uh, leader, you would be thankful that you could go to them and speak. Here we have the ear and the heart and the love of the master of the universe who tells us that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Finally, let me talk about the result of thanksgiving. Verse 7 that we already read tells us about the peace of God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What greater thing can you have than, than, than the peace of God? When, 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 when you get that diagnosis that you don't want to hear, either for you or for your loved one. When the economy is unstable. When your relationship has broken up. What greater thing can you have than the peace of God that will hold you and sustain you? And when you pray to Him, you know that He's going to do the right thing. He may not do what you ask. He may not do what you want, but He will do the right thing. What peace can you have when you know someone who's always doing the right thing is on your side? Then it speaks of the presence of God. It says that he will keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. It's easy to dwell upon the negative. It's easy to look around, especially when everyone around you is complaining. It's easy. It's easy to murmur and complain. But when we have thanksgiving in our hearts, the peace of God keeps us and reminds us that His presence is with us throughout every situation, throughout every problem. And He also says that we have the power of God as the result of thanksgiving. Verse 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I am thankful that I have a God that can provide all my need. A God that loved me so much that He sent His only begotten Son into the world to die for my sins, who was buried and rose again victorious over the grave, victorious over sin, victorious over the devil. And the Scripture said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. What a great reason to be thankful today. And I thank you all for your attention. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father.